Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Kid Icarus Uprising. In the last episode, we ventured into space to the space pirate ship, got back the three sacred treasures, which will help us in our fight against Medusa. And in this episode, what is left but the battle of battles, Medusa's final battle. Before we head out to such a place, there are a few things that I want to go over. First of all, your weapon for this chapter. No matter what, you will be using the three sacred treasures. So your weapon of choice does not matter. But I would like to recommend a few things you can do to help yourself. First of all, if you go into the settings and check to see if shot homing is enabled. If it's disabled, you are going to be greatly nerfed for this chapter because the three sacred treasures have an insane amount of shot homing. Like, it's ridiculously so. And the level is kind of designed, at least I th think it is, as if you have all that shot homing. So I'd recommend going and turning that on if you've turned it off. Second of all, powers. Because of that ridiculous shot homing, um, your shot homing powers and your auto reticles aren't really all that helpful. Maybe auto reticle or weak point reticle might be a little helpful to you, but I don't use them. Instead, I've equipped Mega Laser, which I recommend for tougher enemies. This will do huge amounts of damage, and it covers much of the screen, and you're going to be fighting a lot of really, really tough enemies as you go through Chapter 9. So having four of these uses is really, really nice. Health recovery is always good. Brief invincibility is always good. I put on Crisis Recovery just in case I get a little too reckless and I want to get into Crisis Mode once. It's only a one-time use, and I only have level one of this power, so that kind of sucks. Uh, tirelessness is really good to have once again. But I'd like to mention that there is another power very similar to Tirelessness that we've got now called Lightweight, and some people might like this one better. I don't have an equip just because it takes up too much room for my liking, but it's basically Tirelessness plus a speed boost, but it greatly lowers your defense when you use it and it's easy to run into stuff. I don't like this as much, but some people might, so I want to mention that if that's kind of your thing, Tirelessness might be inferior to you by this point. And then lastly, I have Confuse Attack because there's some tougher enemies that are susceptible to it. I'll be going over those a little bit later. Also, before we head out, there are a few things that I wanted to go over in previous chapters that I just never got around to. The biggest of which being Pandora's Labyrinth of Deceit's alternate pathways in the flying segment. These alternate pathways really don't differ much, you just fight a gauntlet of enemies before going into the correct path automatically. This is a dead end! Looks like you're trapped. Pulling you out of there! The path branches again! Tell me this is a dead end? Let's go back before the power of flight runs out. Is this a dead end? Yes, uh, no? <sighs> the other path that I didn't go to was just simply the other jump pad, which takes you to a horizontal area instead of a vertical area, and you fight loads and loads of wave anglers. I always recommend taking the path that I took, though, because I hate having that many wave anglers, especially at higher difficulties. They're really tough to avoid when you have that many of them. Uh, the other thing that I never went over is that treasure fish that is in Chapter 8. Uh, the one that I said gives you really, really fun treasure. You'll be getting the speed boots, which let you run stupid fast, and a centurion assist, which is basically an auto-firing item that does fighting for you. It's alright. I kind of would compare it to Beat the Bird in Mega Man if I had to compare it to anything. It's not super helpful, but it's nice. And just running fast while having an item doing the fighting for you is really, really fun, especially in that area. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over. Nothing left to do but head into Medusa's final battle. Let's do it! Now, the try this thing is on 6.0. I actually have tried to record this a few times already and just wasn't pleased with my commentary. So, I'm going to be going up a bit higher than that. I'm going to be playing this on 7.0, so pretty difficult. Alright, so ready to go for this. Let's not waste any more time. Let's take down Medusa. Move out! Are you ready for the final battle, Pit? It's now or never. For this final battle, you're equipped with the three sacred treasures. Using the Pegasus wings and power of flight at the same time seems like over. Who knows how reliable the Pegasus wings are after all this time? I've turned them off. Understood. There sure are a lot of underworld enemies around here. Yes, so even though the arrows of light do a lot of damage, don't get cocky. This ravine leads to the underworld. I'm taking you in. Down we plunge into the depths 
Now, I believe one of the most annoying areas is this right here, right off the bat. These trail tails are new enemies. They will put trails behind them that hurt you. On top of that, they've thrown tomatoes into the mix. On top of that, welcome to probably my least favorite enemy, shoot flies. If you fire just one shot, they go absolutely nuts and attack you all over the screen. On top of that, they're jerkish enough to put a souffle here. Yeah. So if you want to go for that, you can melee it up close, but I find meleeing at will during flying stages to be really, really tough. Heck, I find meleeing on ground stages at will to be tough in some situations. Wow, I didn't take that much damage, actually. But this is just the beginning, after all. Let's get this happy trigger, and as we have our charge shots, let's plunge down into the depths, going into the underworld. Got a bunch of Orns right here, and they're actually really easy to take out. Yeah, you can actually defeat Orns with the Arrows of Light. Awesome! You love the three sacred treasures already with that ridiculous shot I'm plus the ability to take out Orns? I know I sure do. Thanatos' gem is shiny. That means we're good to go. Get ready. The Underworld. Finally made it. I fight to win. In your past adventures, the underworld was where you died the most, right? Oh, absolutely. The difficulty level was just brutal. I'll brace for the worst. <laughs> okay, I love that line. That's actually making fun of something. The Underworld was not the final world in the original Kid Icarus, it was actually the first, and you worked up to Sky World. A lot of people believe the original Kid Icarus goes from hard to easy. For that reason, a lot of people never see past World 1. So they're actually making the joke that this really is where Pit died the most, in World 1. Pit 2! What did you just call me? What are you doing here? The same thing you're doing, pummeling on the world fools. I'm just way better at it. Maybe you also said that Pit could use your help. Don't make me laugh. Now enough talk and talk. There's fighting to be done. I'm out of here. It was nice of you to show up, you two. But I can handle this on my own. You're not on your own, kid. You have me. Of course. What would I do without you? Probably walk all the way to the underworld. But that's not the point. That is like the most adorable thing ever. Just, you're not on your own, pit. You have me. I love that so much. So, we've made it this far. You better watch your back! Isn't that just precious? Guess it's all that hot air that keeps you flying. You are, darling. But you'll need more than bluster to defeat me. This isn't bluster! In the name of the Goddess of Light, I will defeat you! What is that? That's the last line of defense keeping us out of the It won't be keeping me out. Meet the Underworld Gatekeeper, yeah, surprise mid-boss. This thing can either be really easy or so much of a jerk. This fire fills up a lot of the screen. It's got these shield blasts that you can destroy by just aiming for the center and moving pit in relation to them. It's got this giant laser of death! Oh god, that was really bad. And we've actually yet to see its worst attack. Uh, if it will use it, if you would be so kind, or if you would be so jerkish, I should say. Okay, come on, get out of the way of those. Because it just isn't using that, I want to mention that there actually are a few tactics to flying that I have never gone over in depth. If you're not firing, you will move slightly faster. For that reason, it might actually be best for you to not fire when it's firing at you if you want to get out of the way of its shots more safely. On top of that, I've mentioned barrel rolling by flicking the circle pad one direction than the other. That will allow you to deflect enemy fire if you barrel roll at just the perfect time, but it's not easy to pull off. But it may be useful to you against this guy. Katu! And that's how you take out a boss. For future reference, face kicking isn't usually this effective. You're right, it's usually more effective. Get a move on before more defenses show up. Patu's right. We should go, even if it means taking orders from him. Thanks, Patu. Please stop calling me that. Pit, get ready to go in. I'm content. It wasn't easy, but we made it to the Underworld Castle. Our fight against Medusa ends here. We're finally here. Look at these boss statues. It seems that each statue has a corresponding door. Let's rest up in this hot spring, and yeah, we're going to be doing a gauntlet against bosses that we have previously fought. What a lot of people might not realize right off the bat, though, if they didn't play the original, is that this is actually 
well, it is Twin Bellus, Hudra, and Pandora, but they were the three bosses in the original Kid Icarus. So this area is one giant reference to the original. Twin Bellus was your first boss, Hudra was the second, Pandora was the third, and then you fought Medusa fourth. So that's what we're doing here. I'll be going in the normal order just because, well, I guess sake of consistency. That and I like references to the original game. It's not overdone, but it's just like it's done in a very classy way that's very subtle that a lot of people wouldn't realize on their first run. This looks like where I had my first battle. You've really come a long way since then, haven't you? Indeed we have. As we start this off, uh, we got a fire worm right here, and I actually want to say, what is it with worm-looking enemies to just kind of sit there and mind their own business while you're a jerk and shoot them in the face? I mean, Zelda's done it multiple times, Kid Icarus has done it here. It's like, is there any worm enemy that doesn't just sit there and let you kill it and, while it's just minding its own business? I mean, look at that, it doesn't even do anything. The only way I could get hurt is if I walked up and touched its flames voluntarily. It's not tough at all, but that is all about the change right here, because we got some new enemies that we have yet to... Well, not new enemies, though, but we have enemies that were definitely not in that first town the first time that we were here. We got over there... Where is it? Where is it? Yes, over there, a Reaper. Yeah, it seems weird that there is a Reaper here, of all things, but there is. Uh, right here, we got ourselves a Stone Card. This introduction, this is the, our introduction to Petrification, which is a really nice stat. It will turn enemies into stone that are susceptible to it. And speaking of enemies that we are going to have a trouble against, that we are going to need that against, I actually don't know if he's susceptible to it, but we have a Clubber Skull right here in a narrow hallway. They are jerks. I understand that it's Medusa and all, but still, it's in a narrow hallway. I recommend using one of your Mega Lasers against it. You also get a lightning of a couple Lightning of Judgments that'll respawn that you can keep using against it. I didn't even need the second one, but I just thought I should mention that. These guys, they shoot lasers that petrify you. You want to hide behind stuff. You have three bouncy bombs right here that'll respawn. There you go. And you can use these to get up some easy damage on them. You can toss them in an arc over stuff. On top of that, if your reticle's yellow and it's touching an enemy, you will automatically throw it at it. Let's see if that's enough. If you hide behind stuff, they really can't do much to you, and the auto-homing uh, properties of the three sacred treasures make this really, really easy. Uh, if you were at all curious, though, some of you have been asking what the three sacred treasures are based on, if they're a reference to Greek mythology. They're actually not. They are a reference, believe it or not, to Japanese mythology. There are three items known as the Three Sacred Treasures. The Arrows of Light are based on the sword Kusanagi. Don't believe me that a bow can be a sword? Its melee attacks are identical to that of the first blade, so it really is just a sword that happens to shoot arrows. The Mirror Shield is based on the mirror Yata no Kagami. I have pretty obvious it's a mirror that reflects things. And the Wings of Pegasus are based on the jewel Yasakani no Magatama. Uh, that one's a bit of a stretch though, but as you can see, they look very similar physically. Do all of these items sound very, very familiar to those of you that have followed my channel for a long time? Yeah. Amaterasu's three weapons in Okami are based on these exact same items. So they have now appeared in two Let's Play, or three Let's Plays actually, if you count Okami did, that I've, pre that I've done. Yeah, for some reason the Japanese just seem to can't get enough of these things. A lot of Japanese rulers in ancient times, and I believe even today, tend to appear with these items, just as kind of a bit of an honor to their power. They are associated with Buddhism, they are associated with mythology, they are associated with many, many, many things all over the world. And because of that, it's just really interesting to see that. Just the fact that they're based on that of all things. On top of that, you might also notice that the three sacred treasures disappear whenever we get into this exo tank. I'm not really sure why that is, I don't know if it was just some kind of limitation or what. But what I do know is, I hate how when you go up here, you fight another Clubber Skull that you must defeat to move on to Twin Bellows. Seriously. These two Clubber Skull fights are harder than Twin Bellows. Twin Bellows is a joke compared to this. Just a couple attacks from the Clubber Skull will be enough to make the Exo Tank get close to exploding. In fact, I'm just going to abandon the Exo Tank right here and now. Uh, luckily, you are in a more open area, so it's a little bit easier to fight the Clubber Skull if you just keep your distance and dodge backwards. Note, dodge backwards. Do not dodge towards or to the side. If you dodge to the side and it's swinging its arms about, you'll just get hit at the end of your dodge. So you want to avoid getting cornered by any means necessary. And of course, as soon as I say that, I get hurt. I should also mention that Clever Skulls will hurt other underworld baddies, so it doesn't really care what its association is. And freaking hate okay, that dodge screwed me up. They are all susceptible to confuse, confuse attack if you want to keep them away from you a little bit longer if you are near a corner and you want to get away from them. So if 
you would just please die, I would very much appreciate it, because you have been fighting for how long, and you are still- I mean, look at that! Aren't the Arizona Light supposed to be, like, the most powerful thing ever? I mean, I told you they're rolling mythology. It's crazy that it takes that much fire to take down. We won't be having that hard of a time against Twin Bells. At least I hope we won't, because that would be really, really embarrassing if I did after that. Get a drink of the gods and head in. Twin Bellows! Here, boy! Old Pit's gonna teach you even more new tricks! And if you're good, I'll take you for a walk! And give you a bath! And a treat! We're gonna rack up some serious Nintendo's trainer points together! Focus, Pit! <laughs> if that didn't sell you on the writing, I don't know what will. Pit is so awesome with that line. There has never been another battle cry better for a boss, ever. <laughs> I don't care if Nintendogs is, is, you know, casual crap as those so-called poor gamers refer to it as. That is amazing, and I love it. But I'm actually getting to commentate a Twin Bellows fight here, so I will tell you. There are grenades that will respawn in this one area over here. If you want to use those against him, be my guest. They are very effective against him. Uh, wow. He will also breathe streams of fire at you and dash towards you repeatedly bouncing off the walls. Doing side dodges over and over again whenever you're not firing is a very effective way to fight him, and you can oftentimes just not even take damage. As you see there, I didn't even take any. Yeah, I didn't get hit against him. That was awesome. But that does it for Twin Bellows. I say now we go on to Hugh area. Back to that burning town. Oh, this place again. This looks like where you fought the Hugh Draw. Yeah, uh, that burn in town, more like that freeze in town. I don't know why it's all cold. I mean, well, actually, we will get, be getting into that a little bit later, why it looks so different. But, yeah, it's all cold here. I don't know. Maybe they just figured if they use dry ice or something like that, they'd get rid of it. This area over here is something that I want to talk about, because I don't get it. Over here, there's these two mix and two mono eyes that will spawn if you head over this way. This is not the required path, so you'd let you'd logically expect there to be a treasure chest wild voice crack. At the end of this path, there is nothing here. I have tried doing all kinds of stuff here to make stuff appear, and nothing ever does. On top of that, I've gotten gold laurels on the stage before without ever doing this, so it's not necessary for gold laurels that there is anything here. What is it with that burning town and just having red herrings in it that look like there should be an item, but there just isn't? First we have that jump pad thing, then we have enemies that are guarding nothing on what appears to be an optional path where they would hide an item. I don't get it. So this whole town is some kind of illusion? It's as real as I am. I built it myself, using your and the Hugh Draw's memories. That's because you don't know what the original town looked like. No matter. You're in my domain now. And you'll play by my rules. Yeah? Well, some rules are meant to be broken. Indeed they are. Love that. Now... You might have seen right there that I was actually able to block a shot using the mirror shield. But mirror shield's not just for looks. If you are not firing, Pit will actually auto guard in front of him with it. So if you want to stop firing and you're not sure you're going to be able to dodge it the way of stuff, you can do that. You also might have seen me doing it against the clever skull. Right here! Uh, welcome to my favorite vehicle of the gods. This is the ether ring. It can generate a shield of light to protect you from enemy fire. You can also move around while doing it. It also is the fastest moving vehicle next to the exit tank. Well, actually, that would make it the second most fastest moving just period. Uh, this thing is awesome. Fire shot similar to an orbiter, and it just all around is very, very safe to use. If you never see an ether ring, if I ever see an ether ring, I will likely be grabbing it just because oh, I love these things so much. They don't have issues like the exo tank does. They don't have issues, or even the Cherubot for that matter. The Cherubot's continuous fire kind of sucks, though. It's only really good if you get a close in melee, which can make the vehicle take damage. But, yeah, I like the Ether Ring a lot. The only weakness of the Ether Ring, really, is that it's very slippery in motion. It's kind of got, like, ice physics to it. So, wow, uh, my vehicle's actually already running out of health. That's very, very not good. Uh, you want to head down here with the Ether Ring. I'm going to try to make this thing survive, because I really want to use it. to traverse gaps in your path. If you, can if make you your do make it all the way, you can get yourself a treasure chest if you prize. save the ether ring long enough. Let's get over here. Let's abandon ship and get ourselves a Halo Club. Okay. Uh, usually I don't get that treasure chest, but I'm very content with myself that I did! Turkish camera! Uh, they put that camera, like, facing away from the enemies when you come here. How could you have seen those coming if you didn't know ahead of time to swivel the camera around? Uh, they're all right on top of you by the time you do see them. Anyway, let's get a drink of the gods, and let's head on in to fight Hugh Draw. 
You draw! Your chances of winning are lower than your belly button, which is really low. You're pretty pumped up, huh? Of course I am. If we defeat Medusa, we save the world. Does Hugh draw even have a belly button? Uh, that's something I want to know. Is there even a belly button anywhere on his body in game? Because I don't think there is. Meaning his chances of winning are incredibly low, more so than Pit even intended with his insult. Then again, he did intend that to be what happens. Maybe he did intend to mean it like that because it doesn't have any belly button at all. Does it? I don't see one actually. I'll just keep on hitting. Wow, I'm looking at a serpent to see if it has a belly button. Wonderful. Same fight as last time, really not that difficult. I believe that it will always be the pink head. I don't know if it actually logs what head you fought the first time, but it does have the pink head here normally. Let's fire at you. It's really easy to hit those energy orbs, a lot more so than last time, just because of the sheer amount of uh, shot homing that the three sacred treasures have. That, ah, come on. I don't think he's got much more health, actually. I don't know if it's my imagination, but these bosses seem a lot easier. <laughs> wow, that, that was great. Okay, next. Just one more to go before Medusa. And of course, after the fact, I come to realize the bosses are so much easier because the three sacred treasures are just so powerful that it makes the bosses feel a lot easier. And that it's character growth showing how much Pit has grown since his first encounter with all these guys. Of course, the obvious character growth analogy was lost on me. Now this is one place I wish I could forget. The Labyrinth of Deceit. Which means a second helping of crazy. Ugh. It'll take more than some fake spikes to stop me! Uh, okay. The reason why I'm going, uh, is coming back from my commentary is that over there. That is a Sinistew. One of my least favorite enemies of all. If there is an enemy that I hate more than the shoe fly, which is very unlikely, it's probably that one. That enemy sucks. I hate it so much. They grab you, they pull you into their box, and you gotta shake the control stick to get free. They do, they rack up so much damage so quickly, and it's so difficult to get away once they've got you. I hate Sinistus, and I just wish they would die. Luckily, though, I was able to run away from it without much problem. Main gimmick of the Labyrinth of the Seat this time around is that these glowing areas will cause you to go between the floor and the ceiling. So I kind of like the fact that they worked in new mechanics instead of just shamelessly reusing it. I mean, Wind Waker kind of sort of was new. It didn't have any new mechanics, if I remember, in its boss rematches, but yeah. A giant mono eye is a bit of a timing game. If you can get it right, you can get yourself a ton of cards for not having to do all that much damage. It's just that it's hard to hit. Uh, it'll also respawn after you go through this area once, after you flip between the floor and the ceiling. So if you want to get another one, you can. Uh, that siren over there, I remember being, like, really, really annoying. Uh, sirens, I don't believe I've gone over. When they fire those whirlwinds at you, they will basically act like a cyclone on you. They will launch you up into the air. So they can be kind of irritating. I like taking that out. Oh, paramush, paramush, paramush. Uh, paramushes. When they are done parachuting, they fire some pretty powerful shots at you if they make it to the ground. So... Take them out while they're in the air, obviously. Hey, a secret area. Once again, we can walk One through this step place. Closer to getting out of this place. Nope, I did not mean to go back in. Oh, uh, Orn, 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 or no. Okay, I, I shouldn't. Anyway, let's just go up here. Hit the, hit the switch. Hit, hit, hit the, there. Okay, after we hit the switch, it'll make that appear on the ceiling, which is actually the floor. My brain hurts. Get rid of the Orn before it can do anything else. The Orns actually don't really seem to have that much health. I, I don't know. It just it seems really strange that they don't, but they don't seem to. All right. We hop onto this jump pad. Very obvious treasure chest that is... I can't really say it's hidden here because it's not hidden at all. And oh, uh, this over here. Bluster. This enemy, right, this enemy will counterattack you with the wool around its face. It's very, like, goat looking. It also fires those waves out of its mouth. Now, I can say this right now. Blusters can be a little bit tough if you don't know what you're doing, but if you just dodge with your timing right, they are really easy. So, you know what, Medusa? You'll need more than Bluster to defeat me! Ha ha! Oh, I've been waiting to use that one! Ever since I found out that thing's name was a Bluster, and you fight one on Medusa's stage, I have been waiting to use that. Uh, I thought of that on my first playthrough, and I'm so glad I got a chance to finally use that one. Uh, let's hop in this chair about. We have now used all three vehicles of the gods in a single stage. And I want you to die. Get rid of this Nettler right here with your melee attacks. 
Uh, you want to keep on these Nettlers before they fire at you because their fire can be a little tough to avoid because it's a spread shot and you're in kind of a slow-moving vehicle. And they are extremely susceptible to your melee attacks. They just kind of flatten like that and are invulnerable to damage for a little while uh, if you just shoot them. But if you melee them, they pretty much go down in one or two hits. So that's kind of what you're going to want to do here. Take him out. Let's get rid of... Okay, let's take let's focus on these guys because I accidentally shot the Nettler. Let's get rid of you. Come on. You die! Backhand! I just love backhanding stuff with a giant mech. It's awesome. Uh, snowman, 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 Okay. Backhand, backhand, backhand. There we go. Done. And you can't be... Okay, there we go. Got rid of you. And I want to go in the chair. I'm about to go fight Pandora. Oh, wow. That was a horrible voice crack. You actually can't do it. Another drink of the gods that I didn't even need. Let's do it. Pandora! Ready for round two? Seems Medusa couldn't make her talk. What do you mean? I mean, that's not Pandora. But it looks just like her. That's just a soul dressed up to resemble Pandora. How clever of you, oh goddess of light. I can't believe you stooped to recycling souls. Is nothing sacred to you? Well, you're in for quiet treat, Medusa. Now watch in amazement as I slay Pandora for the second time. Okay, I'm actually getting to commentate Pandora's fight now, too. Two bosses that never got to commentate, I'm finally getting to. She will try to suck you in. Side dodges can get around that if your timing is better than mine. You also can melee the bombs back at her, like I said before. She has these discs, which I don't think she used on me in the first fight. This is probably the one time where I feel like the boss has more health than they did when you originally fought them. But even then, still not different. Slay complete! Nicely done, Pit. You've destroyed all three statues. Then it's time to destroy Medusa. The path to Medusa is back the way you first came in. How's that even possible? I don't know. But what I do know is, we've taken out Medusa's original three commanders once again, and we've opened up the true path to Medusa. Next time on Kid Icarus Uprising, we'll be heading up those stairs to go face her. See you guys then.